Web Bridlin Tunnel. It's now uh, Wednesday the 13th of March 2024. This is an East Riding uh, of the Yorkshire Council Pay and Display Car Park. We always try to give something back to uh, Bridlington. When, when you think about it, the uh, the toilet block here is uh, you know, always really clean, and also for the ones in the uh, in the town centre. So we're parking this car park, you know, to give some money back to the council. And here's the uh, parking machine, which uh, sometimes uh, doesn't work, but there's actually an app. Never part before. The MI uh, permit app is the one we use, it's really straightforward. I think uh, this is the territory of uh, Bridlington uh, Harbour Commissioners, and it's, uh, it's private land. I hadn't realised the whole harbour was a private estate actually. We can park here, of course. This is Bridlington uh, Harbour Commissioners car park. I believe this is uh, cheaper, but we don't park uh, down here if we can uh, if we can help it. Uh, it's like this yacht that's called. Uh, I thought it was DNA. No, it's called Diva. Being prepared. For the uh, summer season, no doubt. this pier off though uh, as on uh, my last video all I can think of it must have been some really extreme weather uh, you know making this uh, pier unsafe for anyone to buy it you can perhaps see some indications of that by looking at the uh, seaweed here and the actual uh, pier itself
bunch of rust on the railings here. But these railings, I think they probably go back to the 1920s or 30s. This sort of one uh, secret of the uh, harbour or the town uh, that you might want to be aware of if you uh, decide to go down these steps. I think you just run down these steps, probably looking at the steps like this, being careful going down the edge. But there's a pole here. I've never seen anything like it actually. I think generations of us walked straight into it at one time. It will be known now to local residents. But if you do walk up these steps in a crowd, yeah, that's it. Without any warning, there's a metal pole there, right in the middle of the steps. Just something to, uh, to be aware of. These are some of the charges from uh, Bridlington uh, Harbour uh, Commissioners. Interesting to look at these uh, charges per annum. Large catamaran cobbles. We've got to pay that every year by the look of it. £2,136.86 pence or less than six meters or so, so £726. Looking quite expensive actually. Bridlington Harbour, that's what it seems. I've got the same as uh, things elsewhere. Uh, just one of those hidden, uh, hidden things that a general member of the public like myself might not be aware of unless you uh, stumble directly across it. It also, uh, I think, uh, shows what a good thing it would be to uh, support the uh, uh, sailing cobbles here uh, that have been uh, renovated. Tearing a uh, cobble festival there in uh, July 2029. Uh, I think it's called the uh, Sailing uh, Cobble Preservation Society. It's something that seems to be well worth uh, supporting. enough perhaps for uh, today of a uh, beautiful Bridlington Harbour you can see for uh, the summer season which of course is a good thing done the traditional pole dance around that pole I think this is Bridlington's uh, pole dance steps allegedly it's uh, exceptionally uh, windy today at Bridlington, as you can tell. It's typical for the Yorkshire coast, but uh, unusually perhaps it is 11 centigrade, which is uh, a little bit of wind chill on the hands there, makes it feel colder than that. Only five degrees here a few days ago. The rather macabre situation of the uh, funeral power smack bang in the middle of the tourist area. But I think it's closed now. I'm not sure about that.
have the rather narrow uh, storefront of uh, Costa Bridlington. However, upstairs, they still maintain those uh, comfortable sofas that they used to have uh, 10 years or so ago. Perhaps actually they've got no choice. Uh, I think there's no way they could get those great big sofas and chairs down the internal uh, staircases. Perhaps it would take a forklift and taking all the windows out to do that. Perhaps uh, an indication of uh, times changing uh, since uh, Costa were taken over by uh, Coca-Cola and things uh, in most of the Costa branches now seem to be seem to be now uh, to be uh, similar to an American diner, you know, with the hardback chairs and so on. Times change. I guess we have to change uh, with the methods. American nails. You know, we went through the COVID pandemic about a few years ago. And one thing that seemed to uh, sustain, even through the uh, the financial crisis back in 2007 is American Nails, uh, not just here in Bridlington, but in some of the northern uh, Yorkshire towns as well. I'm not sure whether it's a franchise business or whether everyone just uh, calls it American Nails. It seems to be successful. Perhaps some relatively hardy plants here to be planted out. I don't know about some of these. Usually uh, annuals are not planted uh, out, I don't think they are annuals, I'm not sure, I think they're perennial plants, until uh, the 1st of June in the UK, because it's possible to get a frost until then. The beginning of my childhood everything was uh, rationed, food was rationed, meat was rationed, there weren't any bananas right at the beginning and then uh, London if you can imagine it totally devastated by uh, World War II on the docks and everything and then and then the first banana boat uh, came up uh, the River Thames and five, five bananas loaded with bananas from uh, I think it was the Bahamas or the Caribbean. I don't think there was a dry house, a dry eye in the house when that banana boat came up the Thames. And uh, then I'm up in uh, West Yorkshire at that point, and then uh, the guy who came round uh, selling uh, fruit, was, it was pulled by a horse and cart, it was pulled by a horse, and uh, they were selling the first uh, pomegranates. And this thing was an absolute wonder, never seen a pomegranate in my uh, early childhood. And again, at the uh, end of uh, World War II, the late 1940s, everyone was uh, thin. They were thin because uh, there hadn't been enough food. Food was rationed all the way through World War II. However, the one thing that uh, wasn't rationed was uh, fish and chips. And that again showed the uh, importance of the home fishing fleet which uh, probably stopped uh, starvation. You know, you could go and buy fish and chips if you got the money. A lot of calories in fish and chips. It's perhaps not, uh, not often recognized or remembered that it was the fishermen of England that uh, contributed uh, so much to the, uh, the welfare of, uh, of the nation during and uh, in the immediate years after World War II. 
And I, uh, I remember when there was a fishing industry, a uh, white fish industry uh, in uh, Bridlington. And then at some point, the whole thing just seemed to uh, collapse. I don't know whether that was something to do with Iceland and the waters around Iceland. I can't remember it that well. Uh, however, uh, you know, the fishermen sort of uh, adapted to, uh, to lobster. It must have been a very difficult and traumatic time, you know. Now, uh, Bridlington, of course, being the uh, lobster capital of Europe. Just exiting the uh, Promenade's uh, shopping centre at Bridlington. Just thinking about bananas again, and a name uh, springs to mind, Cavendish Bananas. Now, I'm not sure whether they were the bananas that uh, sort of uh, all got a type of uh, blight uh, disease in there. When was it, the 1940s? Or whether that was a replacement uh, banana that pr proved to be more disease resistant that we sort of have these days. Uh, as I've said before, I don't research information for any of these videos. I just walk around using my memory. Uh, however, none of these uh, bananas are as sweet as the, uh, some of the bananas you get in the tropics. The, uh, in the Philippines, for example, and no doubt anywhere in the tropics you've got these much sweeter bananas, but they don't look as uh, aesthetically pleasing. And so, having a, an actual yellow banana proved to be more important than the actual taste of the thing. Again, you could, if you wish, have a look at my uh, one of my very first videos on the channel, which I took at the end of the uh, COVID pandemic in uh, 2021, and have a look at how. Again, you could, if you wish, have a look at the very early videos I took, the first one, uh, which were taken at the end of the uh, COVID pandemic, and see how Bridlington's uh, changed. It seems quite reasonable to me. Certainly, uh, Bridlington has uh, recovered at least as well as our hometown. I always think this is a great shop to uh, to buy food from. Got one of the best laid out uh, stalls in uh, Bridlington. Here we have rhubarb again. I wonder if that was. Uh, grown in the rhubarb uh, triangle of uh, where we live in uh, West Yorkshire. Some absolutely amazing books in here. I've never been through here before. Sort of a uh, back street. Bridlington, you can see some very old uh, properties here. Here we have a walk through uh, one of the back streets of uh, Bridlington. Here we have Bridlington's uh, bus station. You can see more prosperous looking houses down there, some of which are actually uh, guest houses now. Turn around here and walk down this street. No street sign. Looks as though at one time this was uh, was warehouses serving uh, serving the town. More modern buildings on the uh, on the left here. This is actually the uh, the back of uh, Bridlington's uh, 
shopping centre. Makes you wonder what uh, sights uh, these buildings have seen and what stories they could tell. Look at that ancient, uh, ancient window. It actually looks more like a loading uh, entrance, doesn't it? Here we are emerging onto the one of the main streets just outside Boys Shopping Centre. It's interesting, more American nails. Although we've just seen one on the other street, haven't we? Bridlington still managing to support a traditional butcher. citizens of Bridlington on the weekday. I don't think there are many tourists here today, it's too soon. So for today, it's goodbye from uh, Bridlington. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Take care now. Bye.